morning, everybody. Uh, everybody. My name is Slavomir Volv. I'm the CEO and founder of AV System. Um, I will try to tell you a few words today about the future of the device management because everybody is focused today on the IoT. IoT is a kind of buzzword, very hot topic. And uh, from my point of view, the people sometimes forget what's important and why the device management is important. So uh, before uh, we came here, we're, I was trying to figure out basically what kind of story should I tell you to, um, to present you importance of the device management in any kind of IoT solution. Uh, because um, if you take a look on, on the problem of the device management, to be very frank, it's quite boring. We are in the Silicon Valley, basically a very special place on the world. Um, I believe it should be renamed to the software value because today we have more companies here doing the software on silicon. So um, I just uh, search in my memory and basically recall the one event, maybe not so good because it's a kind of catastrophe which happened a year ago here in the US. Basically, I believe everybody uh, here remember Hurricane Irma, um, Florida, more or less one year ago. Uh, the people were escaping from Florida due to the huge hurricane coming. What basically Tesla did, the Tesla over the air upgraded all the, um, all the cheaper S models, you know, from the 60 uh, kilowatts, uh, kilowatts hour to the 75 kilowatts hour. So basically people had a chance to escape faster to stay in the safe distance from the hurricane. So basically it was uh, pretty, uh, pretty hot in the media that the Tesla made this kind of things to the customer, but uh, what's the underlying technology you know, behind that? Uh, it's nothing else than the device management. So what's the device management about, basically? If we speak, certainly the Tesla example is not, um, is, is, um, it's hard to be considered as IoT, you know, the connected cars, it's not the rocket science technology, it's something what we have today in the market. So if we speak about device management, basically we can consider the, we, we, are, we are getting the tools to solve the problem for the device onboarding. So if we want to have the device connected to the network, the device configuration, so if we want to have the service set up and service activated, we can apply remotely over VA the security patches to the device. It's again a huge problem today. You know, we are trying to connect more, more and more devices to the network, any types of the devices, heavier and heavier industri industries basically are more open um, to be IoT ready to implement the IoT solutions and uh, the security is a big fear. Uh, I was talking to many, you know, uh, managers uh, or, or the decision makers in the heavy industry and basically they say, uh, Slavomir, you know, uh, we are not planning to connect our, uh, our device, our machinery to the, to the network because if anything happens, you know, our factory is, is going to collapse. It's, uh, for example, this case is very true, it's about uh, the glass factory. Um, so the photo, for the firmware over VA, uh, again, very classic thing. If you want to uh, deliver to your customers the new features, um, new options, uh, new functionality. Uh, one of the use cases which can be used also in combined with the device management, because with the device, uh, with the device management solution, we can, we can not only um, send something to the device, but we can certainly read the status of the device. We can read the telemetry data from the device, uh, the data which can, can be used from, for the uh, proactive maintenance. So again, we are in the Silicon Valley, so uh, somebody told me that uh, if we are in the Silicon Valley, basically uh, you, you shouldn't have the presentation without a AI. So yes, this is the place where we can use AI, artificial intelligence for the proactive maintenance. Any other reason one could ask if we speak about the device management? If, you know, the previous arguments are not convincing to you, we can try from the business perspective to consider the device management and the, as a kind of insurance. I believe that the insurance model is known to everybody, right? You know, we are buying the life insurance, house insurance, car insurance. is again, nothing sexy in the insurance, right? So it's pretty similar to the device management. Uh, it's mandatory, it's a kind of a basic thing you should have if you are building the IoT application. 
but it's not uh, super attractive. Anyway, let me tell you a few words about our company. So basically, this system is a Polish company based on headquarters in Krakow. I founded this company 12 years ago. Uh, today we have like the more than 100 customers worldwide uh, with the deployed and delivered device management solutions. I like to say that basically we've been playing with the device management solutions um, many years before the device management the device management problem basically popped up on the market. And the customers under understood that it's uh, is important. Um, we come literally from the telecommunication industry. So basically the teleco uh, and the teleco customers are our day-to-day uh, -day bread. So uh, we are dealing with the large deployments, um, having um, the hundreds of thousands and millions of, million of, uh, millions of the devices. In case of the IoT device management, because this is the focus of our presentation, this year our solution was um, listed among top three solutions available in the market. If we speak about the uh, device management platform's focus on the IoT space, um, to give you a bit more specific data, if we focus a bit more on the kind of the uh, on the kind of the technology which we are developing actively, so the light with machine to machine. Um, the technology and protocol for the device management and telemetry in the IoT uh, solutions. So AV system uh, compared to the solution with Nokia and Ericsson from the several test phase. Those data are the public data, so we can browse those uh, data basically on the, on the web. Before we move forward to the light machine to machine and, and this kind of a, a bit more technical discussion, I just want to um, tell you a few words about the, you know, the IoT and uh, where is the position of the device management solution in the IoT, in the IoT scope because you know, today IoT is so hot, you know, the people say we have the IoT platform, I have the IoT platform. You can pretty easily find more than 400 different IoT platforms on the market. Right? The thing is that you can do everything, right? You have the big solution like the PTC um, Thingworks. Uh, you have the industrial platform. You have the platform for the data analytic, doing some AI. You have the platform for the connectivity man management. Uh, you have the platform for the service enablement. The device management is one of the specific territory which needs to be addressed also with focus. I believe that most of you, if you think about the device management, first thing which, come, uh, which comes to your mind um, is MQTT. It's a kind of the classic technology, quite popular in the market, uh, used, for example, under, under the hood of the Amazon device management services. Um, the MQTT um, is a more, from our point of view, the telemetry protocol than the device management pro protocol. Sometimes it is good in some applications, but the, the problem with the MQTT is that you don't have any standardization of the data payload. So uh, it means you don't have any compatibility and in your device which needs to be integrated, basically needs to be integrated from scratch in terms of the um, uh, understanding of the payload being sent by the MQTT uh, terminals. The XMPP is also one of the technologies existing on the market for some time. Uh, it's, it's very popular about um, uh, social solutions, right? So if you would like to think to connect your IoT application to the, to the social uh, channel, I believe that there is um, no better choice than XMPP. The OMAD DM, I don't know how many people uh, you know, ever heard about the OMAD DM. I'm sure that the, those coming from the telco industry know, knows exactly what, uh, what I'm presenting. So the OMAD DM, the protocol having and the technology having today like 15 years, um, heavily used by the telco service providers for the FOTA, firmware over VA of the mobile smartphones. So every time you connect basically your new smartphone to the network, and uh, when the service provider is sending you the, the initial configuration um, to onboard your device, to um, uh, connect your device to the network, uh, the very simple binary SMS is being sent to your mobile phone. So this is basically OMADM. This is how OMADM uh, works. Uh, the OMADM was pretty good protocol, you know, in, um, um, some time ago. Uh, as I said, it's uh, still used by the telco service providers. It's still used by the car maker, by the uh, car industry but uh, it's not a good protocol for the IoT. So there are several new things, like the cope. 
constraint application protocol uh, used for the transportation. I, I, I'm sure that you heard about it. And this is the basic reason of this speech, you know, because we believe that the light machine machine is a kind of future for the device management. Sometimes it's not the technology which solves all the problems we have and, you know, the, the industry and the markets where uh, your engineers uh, or your teams might find another solution, another technology uh, uh, a, bit, a bit better. However, uh, when we observe the situation today on the market, talking to the largest telco, this is the technology adopted. So basically the TO1 telco customers worldwide, I'm not talking about the customers here in the US, I'm talking the customers, uh, the telco operator you know, in Australia, in Japan, in Asia, in Europe, basically all those uh, service providers adopted or are in the, in the stage of adopting this technology in the IoT. Uh, application. So uh, if we com compare the uh, light machine to machine and MQTT, there are several, uh, several differences. So basically the MQTT was the published subscriber protocol. In light ma machine to machine, today with the latest version, it can be both UDP and the TCP transport. Um, it, this is the protocol basically designed for the low power devices. So it's using COPE, constraint application protocol, and the binary payload. Uh, for sending the data. So if you'd like to take a look on the stack, so it's a light machine to machine cope uh, using the DTLS for the um, uh, security and the UDP. The nice thing, and this, uh, this is why this protocol and technology is so well prepared for the IoT application, is that the light machine to machine uh, can be used over the different connectivity technologies. So not necessarily you need to have the connectivity over the classic TCP, uh, TCP IP, UDP uh, stack. You may be sending the device management commands to your terminal to your IoT device using the text messages, for example, SMS. Um, Lightroom machine to machine basically was designed by the same group of people um, designing 15 years ago OMADM. So basically, um, they analyze they analyze all the problems, pros and cons, you know, of the OMADM. They map this into the um, uh, space of the IoT. And um, from our perspective and observing the use cases of this technology in the market, uh, the, 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 the protocol itself is pretty complete. So what is pretty nice, and this is a big difference if you compare the light machine machine to the MQTT, as I said, with the MQTT, you need to analyze and integrate the payload every time. In the light machine machine, you are getting the concept of the data model. So it gives you the, basically, it gives you the chance and the warranty uh, to protect your investment because, you know, the new devices which will be connected to the network can be, for example, auto discover. And this is how the, such a data model can look like, it can be presented in, for example, our device management platform. Uh, so we are here in the event where uh, we are more focused on the enterprise class of the IoT solution, not the telco one. So uh, I had a, a lot of buzz uh, uh, about different connectivity technologies, so Bluetooth, Bluetooth Flow Energy, the Z way if Zigbee are not so hot today, but the BL, BLE definitely. So the light, light machine machine-to-machine machine defines also the, um, the way how to control the um, sensors or very little devices uh, which are connected to the network through this kind of, the, this kind of protocols. Protocol and the technology is still being developed, so the latest version, uh, light machine machine 1.1 introduced the transport over the TCP. The UDP is pretty nice, but um, um, after um, uh, after two years of the deployments, you know the um, the, the real life shows that the issue with the NHE network other translations or for the UDP transportation. So there's a switch to go towards TCP. There are the new bindings for the new connectivity technology and a new, uh, new, even more efficient encoding. So this is, pretty, this is pretty important. Again, if we are focused on the enterprise IoT, or we, um, we speak the Bluetooth Low Energy and another uh, LAN site, uh, wireless connection technology, we speak about the IoT from the telco perspective, basically the two hot technology for the connectivity today, which are being uh, deployed on the market right now. So one of them is the uh, narrowband IoT, and the second one is the LTCADEM1. Basically the different, different service providers on the market are in the different stage of uh, rolling, uh, rolling out those technologies on the market. So, uh, from my knowledge, um, pretty soon 
uh, the US will be uh, under the coverage of both of them. Sometimes there are different players um, pushing the different technologies. So the LTCAD one is AT&T, for example. Narrowband IoT, the Vodafone is behind that. If you would like to play a little bit uh, with um, light of machine to machine, basically we are partnering with the ST. STM is the, uh, is the manufacturer of the chipset. So at the beginning of this year, uh, they launched a kind of the de development kit with the, they call it the cellular to the cloud. So the board with the modem, which is ready and uh, read, ready to be, to be connected to the both narrowband LT and one network. So uh, as you see, as you see on, on the screenshot, on, on the picture, basically the system was on the partner, and uh, that board has um, pre-integrated our light machine to machine stack. If you have another hardware and you would like to give it a try uh, and, and verify the light machine machine, um, we have open source um, free light machine to machine SDK. So it's called Anjay. You can find it on our website, or you can uh, go to the Anjay.io. You can um, uh, download the source code of this uh, SDK from the GitHub. Uh, so uh, it's very, very uh, memory efficient. It was um, the being it, it was developed basically to to be portable for the different um, uh, hardware architecture, different operating system. So basically, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a very uh, good starting point for you if you like to play with the uh, light and machine to machine. Um, uh, saying that another component you will, uh, you will need to have is the device management platform. So certainly, uh, uh, our company is AV system. We are focused on the big customers, big tier one customers. So we have the scalable device management platform. Um, as I said the, at the very be beginning, you know, the different protocols are being solved by the device management. So the FOTA firmware over VA, SOTA software over VA. So if you want to uh, deliver the new software updates and software models on the software capabilities to your customers, uh, with the light machine to machine, you are getting the complete full auto discovery of the device capabilities. I'm not saying only about the data model, so the parameters supported by the device, but also the functionality on the, of the, all, all the actions which you can execute uh, on the device. And sometimes the light machine machine um, is an interesting solution because uh, it can be used not only for the device management, so checking and changing the configuration of the device, but it can be used also for the telemetry. Due to the COPE as the underlying protocol and the, 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 the TLS, the tr transmission is very efficient. So the protocol itself introduces a um, mechanism uh, to control and, and to throttle basically the number of the data being set to the device management platform. Um, Sample uh, screenshot taken from our Coyote IoT device management platform. The, sol the solution the solution can be the solution can be deployed uh, on premise. This uh, very often interesting to the to the heavy industry, as I said. It can be deployed in the private cloud, uh, or there is also the cloud option. Uh, the core feature, as I said, the remote config config configuration, full customization of the great graphical user interface, alerting, proactive maintenance. Uh, configuration, uh, backup and restore, so the uh, pretty standard thing. The platform itself can take the data from the devices, so we can consume those data, or we can send those data to uh, Amazon or to another uh, big data analytic platform. Uh, sometimes the platform uh, introduces the full API um, if you would like to integrate this with uh, your other solution. So the few things I would like you to remember uh, after this um, uh, short presentation, importance of the device management if you will be building the IoT solution, um, importance to choose the technology and the protocol which will be basically will uh, protect your investment. So with the live machine machine you may have one, one protocol and you can connect many different devices later in the future. And that's all what I prepare for today. Thank you.